the KHOU 11 studios. It's Great Day Houston. And now, here's your host, Deborah Duncan. Good morning and welcome to Great Day. We hope you had a wonderful weekend, but it is Medical Monday where we focus on helping you to feel and look better. As we know, cosmetic medicine is a multi-billion dollar industry, and here's the latest beauty treatment up for sale. It's a facial with a special surprise from the birds. Does it really work, or is this new treatment for the birds? Let's find out more in today's Hot Topics. And in Hot Topics today, please welcome hormone specialist Dr. Stephen Hotze, pharmacist Gina Eubank, and family medicine and anti-aging specialist Dr. Bruce McClendon. Okay, as we know, I think most of us are willing to try just about anything if we think there may even be a little hint that it could possibly work. Uh, this little surprise is called the uh, Geisha Facial. They're doing this in the uh, spas in New York. And you know if they do it in New York, then it has to be right, right? Okay, um, it's an imported Asian nightingale excrement mixed with rice bran. This is one of those cases where I don't want to know what's in it. <laughs> All right, so... It, what do we think? You know, it's interesting where we, we find things. You know, they go to the Amazon to find different chemicals that create. So, it, you know, we find that there's a lot of natural things that actually are uh, helpful. And this happens to be an enzyme that actually helps uh, uh, break down the skin and, and exfoliate the skin. Uh, you know, you, we talked about before uh, the snail facials, where yeah. they would have snails crawling on your face. Well, you know, in reality, that has growth factors that's amazing. And, uh, you know, those products are very good. So, you know, you never know what you're going to, what's going to work, but this actually works. Okay, I'm going to look yeah. at birds in a different yeah. way now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like you walk out the sky and go, hello. <laughs> Instead yeah. of wiping it off there. Okay. I'm, my thoughts on it, um, just strictly from our bodies, is your colon works to get rid of things, toxins that it doesn't want anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, is a bird that different? So I'm a little reluctant to put it on my face. Well, maybe their diet is good. Uh, because I mean, birds eat better things. Do. And well, when they get rid of those things, maybe they can help us a little well, bit. Well, I must say, you know, they didn't want pigeon excrement. Yeah. They wanted, you know, the Asian nightingale. nightingale. Yeah, so which the, sounds a little more romantic to well, me. Well, they, <laughs> they eat only nuts. But I think I'll stick with like a fruit enzyme peel for okay. now. Okay, all right. Data then. <laughs> okay, this is a new term that's come out called digital dementia. And what it's talking about is how the younger generations aren't into memorizing things anymore for the long term. You know, we press it, just Google it, and you get it for the minute, and then you toss it. And so they're saying that, you know, young adults don't feel they need to memorize information anymore, and they're thinking about how this might impact us in the long run. So okay, you're looking up some stuff right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, five let me times Google. five? Let me look that up right there. Let me use my calculator for that. Uh, so we kind of go to something else for a lot of answers nowadays. Even doing simple math is whip out your calculator. I find that true. You see a lot of kids that, uh, you know, they're doing change that are having problems, you know, with, with giving you change because especially if they're having to do it themselves instead of it automatically coming down because they just don't practice. Yeah, when I happened, we confused a lot of people when you're like, okay, what I gave you was 1080, so you need to give it, me 20, and they're like going, um... I'm sorry, what was that again? Nah. You owe me a hundred dollars. And they start pulling it out of the cash register. But you're right, we rely on machines to do all of this. So uh, looking at what that might, uh, how that might impact us in the future. If anything ever went down, we know when the internet went down or when mm -hmm. uh, you know, power went down, we're stuck. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that you know, your brain does function and, and it improves its function with you. So obviously they have uh, even some new websites with games that improve your mental function just by making you remember things. So using your memory is extremely important. It's like exercising a muscle. It, it is. It really is. It's extremely important. And I don't think we do enough of it. I'm just, I'm guilty of it too. You know, I need something, I look it up right quick and yeah. then it's gone. You know, it's not there. They advise for elderly people to do crossword puzzles, mm -hmm. Sudoku, things like that, um, to stimulate, just like you said, a, a muscle. So Interesting you said that. I was on a plane recently, and the person was doing the crossword puzzle, and what gave the hints was <laughs> looking up on their phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that was, um, oh, who starred in such and such? <laughs> it's kind of like, I don't know about that. Okay, uh, there's a new Coke ad out, a new Coke ad campaign to defend the sweetener aspartame. Now, we know for many, many years now, that whole uh, debate has been going on about artificial sweeteners. You know, the body can recognize sugar. We know too much sugar can be bad for you, but the body knows what it is. Uh, when it comes to some of these artificial sweeteners, 
uh, is the jury still out on what that does inside the body, or well, do you uh, all have your? I'll just say on the spark team, it's fact. It's a neurotoxin. Period. Mm -hmm. End of story. So, why you would put that in your body, I just don't know. Plus, people that it also increases uh, your desire for food. So, people that let me ask you, how many thin people do you know that drink diet drinks? Oh. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. You don't see you don't see thin people drinking diet drinks, and diet drinks have a tendency to cause you to increase your your desire to have more food and more calories. And that's so it increases the your cravings. Does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and it's interesting when you so. see things like uh, people who suffer from migraines, and they'll say to them, "Hey, uh, don't uh, drink the diet drinks because it can irritate." Uh, these, are, these are chemicals that never existed before in nature. You're putting into your body, and it just doesn't make sense. Okay, so you're saying it is I not safe. Stay away for you. from absolutely not. There's uh, not been anything proven. There's a lot of well, studies. That, there's, that, there's, that, there's, that, there's been studies, but there's yeah. been nothing that's really uh, the, the hard facts that is going to cause cancer. That was one of the biggest scares was cancer. Right. I, I agree. It probably is a neurotoxin uh, when used in, in high amounts. Uh, if you drank one Diet Coke a day, is that going to be a big deal? Probably not. But if you're drinking five or ten, yeah, it's probably a big deal. Hmm. Yeah. All right. How does it manifest itself that we know of? I know sometimes, again, with migraines, we see people well, with that, migraines. It, it, you talk about the cravings. Right. It, it, bloating. Mm. Okay, bloating. Okay, we don't need that if you're trying to drink a diet drink. Uh, I don't need to be, <laughs> don't need to be bloated. In, in long term, there haven't been long term studies to know the effects people come down with illnesses and why do people have illnesses? Why do people develop cancers? Why do we have increasing cancers? Is it things in the environment? Well, it's things like aspartame and petrochemicals and the phthalates and all the things we get in our food. Well, the, you're putting your body in that fight mode. And as yeah, much as your body has to go. fight, it just wears it down. And why, why put yourself in that and risk that? Okay, but, good. But, but what is even worse is the real thing. And that's drinking Cokes and drinking the, 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 the sweeteners uh, because that really, you know, People should drink water, lemon water, those types of things. Uh, you know, when you're drinking a, a, a regular Coke, you're getting, you know, 100, 120 calories. Is that all? Probably. Yeah, well, depending one. on what size you get. Right. Yeah. I mean, it it may, the maybe 200 the, yeah. calories. And my thoughts are, you're better off not putting a neurotoxin in. Go with something real that was put on this earth. Real sugar, not GMO corn syrup, which HEB. Their brand is real sugar, which yeah. a lot of people do not realize. So I'm like, have a real one, have it once a week, be done with it. It's better than putting a potential toxin in your body. That, yeah. I mean, just don't even go there. I love I it. like it's the Friday, I'm having a soda. <laughs> <laughs> Get crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Something else that's happening that's, that's pretty interesting because uh, sometimes we look at healthcare and it's almost like it comes from the top down. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's healthcare kind of change is coming from the bottom up. Thyroid patients are organizing and agitating, is how they described it. Uh, there was an article and it says that it's a grassroots patient activist organizing to have doctors recognize hypothyroidism. We've talked this about this before, where. Right. The fact that this article made the Wall Street Journal, I think it was last last Monday, the fact that it made the Wall Street Journal that patients, people like you and mm -hmm. your friends are agitated and organizing to tell physicians, you're not listening to me, I've got a thyroid problem, and the doctors tell them, your blood tests say you're fine, you just need antidepressants, you need Ritalin, you need Adderall, you need yes, anti-anxiety. I get stopped on this you all the time. All, you need all these medications, me. and it's really a re it really is a revolution, a wellness revolution, that the people are rising up against conventional medical doctrines say, enough's enough, we don't want your drugs anymore. We're not going to let you poison us to death anymore. We have a thyroid problem, and all you have to do is treat it. And that's why I wrote my book, Hypothyroidism, Health and Happiness. Yeah. And it's the book your doctor doesn't want you to read. Well, instead of relying on the tests, what you look at are the symptoms, mm -hmm. which, you know, I'd been taught years ago that that's kind of how medicine goes in terms of how to diagnose. You say, okay, if there's this symptom, this symptom, this symptom, it must be this as the cause. Right. Let's get rid of the cause. And what he was talking about earlier is that, you know, after I had my son, I was super, super tired. I was super depressed. Um, I... I just, I was irritated. All types of things were happening to me. I gained weight and I couldn't figure out what it was. And when I went and had my blood tested, they said, well, it's not your thyroid because you're within the range. <laughs> and I'm like, well, whose range is that? You know, and you could be anywhere because any change in your hormones, you can feel that, right? Sure. So it could be anywhere in between, but they kept saying, you're within, but we're going to give you Adderall. 
to give you your energy. We're going to give you an antidepressant. We're going to give you um, something to recirculate your sugars, and hopefully you won't get type 2 diabetes. It kept going on and on and on. And I was like at $1,000 a month going, <laughs> wait a minute, but none of these are addressing the problem. I, I was so angry because it was what, well, this is four what doctors this, this, later this, this that is, said you still need all these medications that would, by the way, damage your liver, so please come in for a liver test once a month. Well, there, there are literally thousands. You go online, there, there are tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that belong to these organizations that are raising cane with physicians, and they're trying to find help. Yeah. All right, uh, kind of along those, those same lines, uh, Gina, I think oftentimes people misunderstand exactly what a pharmacist does besides just dispensing medication. You're kind of like the other arm to physicians. Uh, things like, uh, I know oftentimes patients will come up to you who are using high blood, blood pressure medications, and you will stop them and say, okay, we've been on this a while now. Do you mm -hmm, understand mm -hmm. what the real purpose of these medications are, and what are you doing to get off of them? Exactly, because, you know, when somebody's diagnosed um, it's to, and given medication, it's to get them out of crisis mode, okay, so that they don't have a stroke. Well, a lot of people misunderstand and think that the high blood pressure medication cures their high blood pressure. And, and it does not. It strictly gets it under control to get them back in the safe zone. And meanwhile, they can look at the other lifestyle issues that they need to adjust. The real cause of the high the, blood the, pressure. Which yeah. is causing it, exactly. Like if they're overweight, um, if they're extremely stressed out, their eating habits, exercise. Type 2 diabetes. Of course, type metabolic syndrome, you know, which is just setting them up for, which is where the people that carry their weight around their stomach area. So it gives them an opportunity to get those under control and adjust their lifestyle. And as they're doing that, they need to stay in contact with their doctor because as their weight comes down, as they're exercising, you know. It's almost like as you take the pressure off the body, then ex things fall back exactly. into place. Exactly. But the medication can't in itself take the pressure off the body. You gotta change what you're doing that, that's causing it. it, it exactly, you know, it's the same thing as the people people that are on high cholesterol medicine around the holidays and they think, oh, I'm going to cheat, so I'm going to take two Lipitor. And it's like, oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just like, really? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they just don't get it. And there are those people that are out there, but there are those that honestly do not understand that this yeah, is just a Yeah, because I think anytime you prescribe ache. something, we think you're yeah. getting rid of, like, you know, if you give us insulin, you're getting rid of my type 2 diabetes. Well, you got to do some other things. Well, they think of it like an antibiotic. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. You know, I just have yeah. to take it every day. All As right. a physician that does it, I, I do a lot of explaining to my patients about hypertension and, and, you know, it is a disease. Yes, there are sometimes things you can do personally, certainly losing weight, eating right, but there are people that do have the disease of hypertension that gets worse with age. Right. And they do need to be on medications. They don't need to stop those medications without their doctor's advice. No, no, no. no. So, but, but it is hard to get people to change their habits and their patterns of their life. That's the hardest thing I deal with in my practice is, you know, you know you're 100 pounds overweight. Th that is your disease. Yeah. And until we get that under control, the diabetes, the, diabetes, the hypertension, yeah. and the high cholesterol, those are going to remain. And we're just going to have to deal with those on a daily basis. But as soon as people lose 50, 70 pounds, they, they all come off medicine. But I gave you my $30 yeah. copay. That's up go. to you to take care of my problems. Yeah. <laughs> all yeah. right. Well, today on Facebook, we're getting deep. Would you rather change your past or know your future? Log on and let us know what you think. We'll share some of your comments a little bit later on in the show. Well, you've all heard the saying, the family that prays together stays together, but what about the family that visits the doctor together? How my next guest turned getting healthy into a family affair. Next.